big picture time folks and it's about a conversation that a lot of you have been having so nothing is scripted on the show the notion of hate watching people show up week on week to say how much they hate something but for the most part nothing is scripted so yeah. what you call what you call it is guided or directed reality mm. like everybody thought it was going to paint us in bad light and yeah. it was going to be a bad idea why is that is the where where <laughs> why is 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 a standard human want. You mm. want to peep into the lives of the wealthy. I want to talk a little bit about the business. What was the most surprising or shocking thing that you watched on the show and you were like, Allah? Big picture time, folks. My name is John Alan Amu here at Africa Uncensored, and we've got quite a show for you. And it's about a conversation that a lot of you have been having. At, lot, at least a lot of you have been saying that you're not having, but you're having, but your eyeballs are there. And it's around the release of a new show that's been um, like ruling the streams over the past, I'd want to say, one, two months. It's a really interesting show. And the person who uh, produced it is here. Of course, I'm talking about the Real Housewives of Nairobi. What a show, what interest it's generated. I don't think anybody could have anticipated just how much interest you know, it's generated. And the person who I have in studio is the CEO and founder of DNR Studios, Mr. Eugene Bowa. Thanks a lot for coming, Eugene. Thanks like, for me, John. as we were exchanging guests, we met at the door with our last guest and she was like, yeah, in fact, you guys are having this. <laughs> and I was like, wow. And we had this like really high, you know, sort of, um, I don't want to call it like, like high brow, but it yeah. was like very stimulating conversation. And I looked at her, I was like, mm, okay. And yeah, people are uh, a mishmash of interest, yeah. right? Yeah. And, and, and she's really interested in the show. Congratulations on the success. Right? Before we get too deep into, into things, uh, there's also someone who I'm assuming follows the show. Uh, Tracy, Tracy Bonareri. Yes, how are you? I am fine. You're okay? Yes. Have you followed the show? Or I have follow you followed all his shows? All, <laughs> you see the, all the shows. <laughs> She's a big fan. She's a big fan. Yeah. So Tracy's going to be doing um, the fact checking for us on this episode. What we like to try and do is to do quite a bit of fact checking. So just educate you know members of the audience about stuff that that's out there that's fake etc yeah. um and this is an interesting conversation to have about what's real and what's fake mm -hmm. but we'll get into that i want to ask a first question just around our fact checking agenda eugene you've been around for a bit right and people know you as this uh, media magnet media mogul i i I, sh I can say now right um, what's the weirdest thing that you've seen about you online that's not true? Um, I think there's been gay accusations. I've seen those. Oh, really? Uh, based on, I, I took a picture and I was sitting with my legs crossed. Uh -huh. And there's a bunch of guys who commented on that and said, look, this is one of those LGBTQ guys. Are you serious? City. Because your legs were crossed? <laughs> yeah. Wow. Uh, okay. but other than that, I don't you should think... have flipped your hair and said, no, I'm not. Uh, look, what gave you, uh, what was that, your first clue? Idea. Yeah, my God. Yeah. Uh, but I don't think there's much written about me, to be uh, to be honest. I haven't seen yeah. uh, any any stuff. Um, there's, you know, when you share your story, sometimes people will cast mm. doubts about them. They're listing there's someone else behind the company, and mm -hmm. I don't know. But there's not there's not much that that, that I have seen. Yeah. Um, except that one, perhaps. Okay. Yeah. That's an interesting. I'm sure I miss a bunch of stuff too. Yeah. 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 But once again, congratulations on on the success of the Real Housewives of Nairobi. My first question is around whether you anticipated how big this show would be and how you planned for that success. Yeah. Um, so the, the Real Housewives, is, uh, the format is owned by NBC Universal mm -hmm. and Showmax, uh, which is part of MultiChoice, uh, have acquired the franchise for it for most African countries. And so the, the show, first of all, had had a lot of success uh, in other markets, starting mm -hmm. with the States and then went to Europe. I remember Real Housewives uh, of Atlanta. Atlanta, and, yeah, Orange County, big, yeah. New York, there's mm -hmm. Dubai now. Mm -hmm. um, and so those have done amazingly well over the last decade or two. Yeah. And then so before we, we came to Nairobi, uh, Showmax has uh, Real Housewives of Joe Bag. I think that was the first one in Africa. Mm -hmm. Then they did Real Housewives of Cape Town. They did Real Houses of Durban. Uh, then Lagos, then mm. us. We were the first ones uh, outside of uh, South, mm. Southern and West Africa. Uh, and then I think Abuja as well. And the thing about the franchise is it's, it's succeeded almost everywhere. It's gone. Mm. So it's something that works. It works. Mm. Uh, because you see that there's, uh, NBC Universal has created this format um, that's, that's very well documented in dozens of pages. Mm. And they control everything from uh, how people are seated down to 
how you select the cast members. Mm. Um, so going in, of course, it was a very big investment from Showmax. And there was la- huge, huge expectations on how it was supposed to perform. Mm-hmm. Of course, uh, despite its success elsewhere, there was still a chance of failure here. Yeah. Um, and, and, you know, was, it was a very scary production to do all through. Mm. Uh, you, you're, you're doing it for the first time. There's all these rules. Uh, but we got a lot of support from, uh, from NBC Universal. We mm-hmm. had someone come down and do trainings. Uh, I went to meet them in the south of France. We mm. went to have trainings with them in Cape Town. Um, and then also we got a lot of support from Showmax as well. They sent some teams who've worked on the show in SA, in Nigeria, to come in here and train our, 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 crew. our crew. Mm-hmm. Uh, they sat through uh, and helped us a lot with storylining, mm. uh, with cast selection. So there was a lot of hand-holding that we got as a company from, mm. from both uh, Showmax and NBC Universal that really helped. Mm-hmm. Uh, but then, of course, now, once the show uh, launched... Yeah, that's the, your baby now, in a, in a sense, right? Yes, yes. And yeah. the cast members, of course, are the ones who carry it. Kenyans are falling in love with their stories, with their mm. personalities and who they are. Um, they 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 are as polarizing as they are enchanting. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Uh, so it's you know there was always a fear of failure, which as is always it's any project. Yeah. But the fact that we I think we we did a good job of sticking to to the format and the support of both the partners. I think that's what has really contributed I, to. I think this is an interesting thing to be telling our audiences mm-hmm. because when people watch reality TV, the the impression by and large, I mean there's there's the more discerning viewer. But the impression by and large is that, you know, they just plonk a camera in front of mm-hmm. you and you just act the way you act on a daily basis, yeah. right? But the the scripting, the storylining, the selection of characters, mm-hmm. all of these things that you've mentioned is very, very deliberate, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. So I guess for, for someone who'd be watching this and, and, and wondering to themselves, well, what's real and what's fake mm-hmm. on the show? Or yeah. what's real and maybe fake is a bit too harsh. What's scripted on the show? So nothing is scripted on the show, except perhaps for voiceovers, you know, next week on, mm. <laughs> those we might write. Uh, but for the most part, nothing is scripted. So yeah. what, you call, what you call it is guided or directed reality. Yeah. Uh, and, and how that works is you basically map out uh, the cast members and you say, you know, we think so and so has this story that could be pursued. Mm. And this is how it's connected to uh, another person. And you sort of almost map out... The, what you consider the journey that will be for every cast member. Yeah. And so the first trick, of course, is how you pair, how you 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 put together this group of people, mm-hmm. how you select them. There's there's certain traits you look for. They, yeah. they must be very expressive. Mm. So if you notice, a lot of our cast members mm-hmm. can, can really tell you what they think. Yeah. They're expressive. They're um. They've got uh, colorful personalities. Mm. Uh, they're interesting people. That like they're they're leading actual interesting lives. Yeah. Uh, they like to dress up and mm-hmm. and and show up. They um. They've got. You know, intricacies about them, they also, the, the cast members tend to not be very young. Yeah. So they're also quite experienced. Mm. Uh, no, no, they, they've lived a life. That, mm. Does that make any sense? Mm-hmm. So that they've got a mm. background, they've got friends around them. Yeah. Um, they've done some miles, like yes. in this journey of ours. Yes, life. yes, yes. Yeah. Uh, they've got, they've got li- lived experience. I think mm. that's what it's called. Mm. Um, it also helps in some cases where you have celebrities like Vera, mm-hmm. uh, so that, you know, the audience already has some familiarity to who she is. You yeah. have someone like Mine, who's also an actress. Mm. Um, so how you select the group of people and sort of how you imagine the storylines uh, that are available. Yeah. But then once you you do that mapping, which is very theoretical, mm. and once you put these people together, assuming they agree to it, uh, it then takes a life of its own. I want, to, I want <laughs> us to go there. What was the most surprising or shocking thing that you watched on the show and you were like, Allah, we thought that this would work this way. We thought that these guys would have this chemistry. But uh, it looks like um, they're, they're not having the right kind of chemistry or we thought that this wouldn't work. This aspect of the show might be something that people wouldn't pay attention to. Mm-hmm. That's attracted a lot of attention. Uh, I think so. So two things. We've been surprised by both the cast members yeah. and the audience. Mm-hmm. So there's episodes that I considered a bit slow. Yeah. Uh, you know, where there wasn't much drama, I think, especially towards the season. Mm. Um, and, you know, you sit down and, and say, you know, like, hey, we don't think these ones will do very well. But then you go on the, on the comments online and you find that yeah. the audience loved it when the when the when the cast were fighting mm. but they loved it even more when they were making peace mm. which goes against yeah. what you think the show is supposed to be yeah yeah <laughs> so you know at the beginning we had uh, we had the episodes that began and you you had some uh, some drama between some cast members you yeah. know you had uh, Mine and, and, and Susan mm-hmm. you had Vera and Sonal mm. uh, and people 
cheered those on. Yeah. But then they celebrated more when they made friends. Mm. And if you look at even the comments from across the continent, yeah. part of the uh, the praise that the, the season one is getting is that uh, Real Housewives of Nairobi takes you deeper beyond uh, mm. the conflicts. Mm. So they take you into what uh, Dr. Catherine does for a living yeah. and her attempt to... Um, to uh, to hold Mine's hand business wise, mm-hmm. they love uh, how we've showcased the city. Mm. Uh, so a lot of those things, you know, initially you think like, oh, let's get drama, let's get drama, yeah. and then the audience also wants peace. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So some some of that stuff. All is, want is, different is, things from the. Yes. And and that's the interesting thing about this show. You mm. would assume that, and you know, I I want to use like a somewhat um, demeaning euphemism for these kinds of this kind of genre you'd assume that trash tv in a sense mm. is a sort of thing that only a specific kind of person watches mm. Mm. but what's been surprising to me is how well known the show is yes. across genres mm. uh, across genders mm-hmm. across people who have assumed sort of like likes in terms of genres yes what does this reveal to you about our audience now especially with this kind of a show it's a very out there mm. show right mm. so and and also maybe like a step forward from what you've done in the past in terms of the reality stuff that you've done. Yeah. What surprised you most about the audience? Um, I think so. First of all, we we, we have a long history of reality TV mm. in, in in Kenya before we got to uh, to Real Housewives. Yeah. Uh, the the initial bit about it was we the first show we did was called Bing Bahati, mm-hmm. uh, which was our first celebrity. It wasn't it wasn't yeah. it wasn't the first celebrity reality show in Kenya, I think, because there had mm. been Nairobi Diaries mm. um, and maybe one other, but it was amongst the the, the first yeah. three at the at the, at the at the very most. Yeah. Um, and when we did that, it was on NTV, uh, and it was you know it, it's what uh, it, it it brought the Bahati's personal life with with his wife Diana mm. into the forefront. And I remember at the time uh, we, were, we were watching the, the reviews of the broadcasters and it was surprising as hell because on one hand, the numbers are so good, but mm. the sentiments are not. Yeah. Uh, and it's it's the notion of hate watching uh, mm. uh, where people show up week on week to mm. say how much they hate something. Yeah. But even the stuff that they're commenting on is minutes 24 just before the show ends. Mm. So it tells you they are watching it. They've gone through the entire, every week. The, the yeah. entire and, show. And they're doing this every week. Mm. And that was just like extremely confusing. Yeah. Because clearly you love this thing. Mm. Otherwise you wouldn't be consuming it as much as you are. Mm-hmm. Um, and then we did... And that, you know, Bing Bahati was a bit drama heavy. Uh, then we did... Uh, soul family, it's Saudi soul, yeah. and the, the genre here was entirely different. So we mm. took the we took the format of docu docu reality. Mm. Uh, so where you mix, we're telling you the story of where they came from as well mm. as what they're doing now. Mm. And I think uh, Soul Family played a very interesting role because it it premiered around when the pandemic was yeah. uh, was was starting, and so I think that just cool energy mm. uh, that guys are just vibing. It's, it's it's characters you know and love, mm. uh, but you know it had no drama. Uh, yeah. This was it was it was feel good television. Yeah. Uh, then after that we did uh, this love with a when nameless again mm-hmm. same same approach mm-hmm. very familiar uh, oriented, oriented. Um, again no drama nothing uh, nothing nothing as heavy and then of course now we did Kelo culture now Kelo mm-hmm. culture borders more mm-hmm. on the more edgy reality yeah. TV that uh, that succeeds yes and true to it the, the numbers for Kelo culture have been much higher than everything else we've done before mm-hmm. and then now you have real houses which is very structured and uh, and I think part of it is how the audience, how the cast has selected, the yeah. fact that you have six different personalities. Because if you look at all the other ones, it's husband and wife. It's yeah. a group that sings together. Mm. Where else is this like very different people? Yeah, completely different energies, mm. etc. Mm. Put together over a period of time. Yeah. And I think what it reveals about the audience is just that number one, we are we are more global than we think. Mm-hmm. Because this franchise has worked everywhere. everywhere. Uh, and I remember when it was first announced in Nairobi. Uh, it was the the reception was not very good. Mm. Uh, the, I remember reading those tweets and thinking, do you even want to do this? Yeah, it's like the, it was Mr. Ibisha, Don't do this; it's a bad idea. Oh like, really? Yeah, Kenyans are what are the words? It's just going to be pretentious. Can you imagine Jew who wearing what? Mm. Like everybody thought it was going to paint us in bad light, and it yeah. was going to be a bad idea. Mm-hmm. But again, it speaks to just we are more global than we actually think. So mm. that's number one. And then you know, voyeurism is is a standard human want. You mm. want to peep into the lives of the wealthy. Mm, that one want, percent. Yes, you yeah. want to see how they're living, what cars they're driving, mm. what what their their troubles are currently. Yeah. Um, I think one of the surprises that people have is the houses. Like, hey, those houses are in Kenya. Mm. They mm. are, you know. Mm. So I think that the element of we are more global than we think, the element of voyeurism, 
the fact that we are also just generally very interested in other people's lives, mm-hmm. gossip and and, mm-hmm. and 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 what's going on with them. Yeah. Uh, so I think yeah, it's 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 it says that we are we are pretty much like everybody else yeah. globally. Perhaps we were afraid of of who we actually are, and thus the negative comments at the beginning um, when when the show was announced. Mm. Right? And yeah. I think also have, like, as Kenyans, we have a lot of self hate. Mm. It's ah, can you can you comp- can you imagine when they start comparing us with with Joe Bug? Yeah. Um, and I guess maybe there's I don't. I I cannot remember another TV show in Kenya, mm. at least because you see you have the scripted TV shows that that are set yeah. in the high end uh, world of Nairobi, mm-hmm. but then perhaps also in the audience's mind, in, at least in the majority of the audience's mind, the, the perception has always been ah, see, but you've scripted that, that's not yeah. what it's real life. So you know, there's a difference between that and yeah. seeing these people with their champagne daily mm. and driving their nice cars and going on these holidays mm-hmm. uh, and you know flying around in helicopters. Yeah. It's it's uh, perhaps Kenya Kenyans didn't were not quite sure that that existed mm. Mm. and to that right so that you're opening up this world that kenyans don't know existed and and this is for you know the average kenyan who who, who leads a life that's fairly far away from from uh, the kind of experience that uh, that that a vera would have on a daily basis right so what's been the most heartening thing that they've said to you about the show like I watched this and I feel this about my country or mm. about the characters or about myself. Has have there been those kinds of moments? Because I ask this because you know sometimes we tend to look at reality TV specifically or that kind of genre and be like, okay, this is fast food. I'm watching it just so that I can fulfill my need for gossip, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Yeah. But has there been anything a little deeper that kind of like shocked you about the, the audience's response? There has been. On, on, for right from the very beginning mm. uh, up until now i think one of the oh, speaking now to almost everybody i meet one of the first things that everybody has praise for is the light in which we've painted nairobi mm. so how the fan that's intentional as well from the franchise so how yeah. the franchise is set up is uh, nairobi is a character mm. in the show so mm. you've got your five housewives and you've got nairobi as one mm. um, and so you know we took a lot of time and, uh, and and this of course credit goes to to, to the crew that that shot it we had a huge team of almost 70 people working mm. on it um, and i think one of the things that we are getting the most praise for now is and even on a personal capacity is how well we painted nairobi mm. you know i'd never seen it from that angle i had yeah. never seen that drone shot there hey, is this nairobi still you know mm. Mm. Um, so the fact that people are feeling proud of their city yeah uh, i think that 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 has been really encouraging mm. um and then you know the show does delve into into really really uh, um have, Heavy matters. Yeah. Uh, so you know, like our cast member, Alex Onal, has shared her struggle with, uh, uh, with, 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 um, you know, her, her mental well-being yeah. all across the season. Mm. Uh, you had someone like Mine who shared, uh, you know, she suffered a miscarriage during the season and shared mm. this with the audience. Uh, you had someone like Susan who some of the heartwarming scenes were about mm. uh, her uh, her relationship with her daughter, mm. and you had someone like Lisa who shared her journey uh, battling cancer. So you see, it's not there's yeah. quite a lot of depth there, and mm. and if you go into uh, into 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 the comments and the different audience and who they like, yeah, they actually do really talk about what sharing your story has done for me. Mm. And as you know, you working in media, really, that's yeah. that's what we do. That's uh, true. When someone can watch something on screen and feel feel hard and, and feel that feel they're not seen, alone right yeah um, and this show has done that uh, the, the, the the cast members trusted us enough to bring a lot of depth yeah uh, m- much more beyond what what we thought yeah mm. one thing that surprised me and, and I guess this is now my admission to everybody here that I've watched, <laughs> I've watched the show <laughs> right guilty right <laughs> one thing that surprised me was the gender reveal party right maybe it's because i've ha- I, we had our kids a long time ago yeah where the gender reveal was on the day of the birth or or at an ultrasound at best <laughs> oh it's a boy here are the pictures yes yeah. then now we go and start shopping for this child but now when i when i made this like when i made this admission to my wife she was like yeah but there's you know there's also guys who are getting push presents yes and and i'm like what you're not giving them have you I, my my youngest is fortunately for me i didn't have to do that but why i'm ask why i'm saying this is because for me i missed that part of of kenyan subculture mm. where there's that heavy investment in these very ostentatious things what about the show 
kind of like surfaces these kinds of things about our country that that we're just not we're just not seeing you know like in our subculture that that then people maybe who are in that culture kind of respond to it like yeah that's actually true yeah i i think uh it's it's not really real houses to be honest yeah. uh, it's it's probably just brought it to a larger audience that perhaps mm. uh who were following the similar stories on yeah. social media instead mm-hmm. so instagram i think is what has brought about most yeah. of these things uh because like if you look at uh how birthdays are celebrated now mm. um the child birth generally from uh, even graduations i think yeah. people people are now showing up to their primary school kids graduation in motor kids yeah um and that i think uh, as humans i think some of our most important life steps child birth is a big mm. one mm. and so I, um vera was doing uh, mm-hmm. uh gender reveals way before real houses came along we tried yeah. to, we tried to shoot a show with her back in the day and mm-hmm. you know that was a big part of it yeah. and i think there's a there's a section of social media but, but like from a helicopter <laughs> Man, I don't know like, if but I don't know if you're following the gender reveal uh, drama globally. I I it looks I I have been following parts of it now that I've started to yeah, see this. Yeah. And like I was telling you off off the show off camera, I walked I happened by one when I was taking my son somewhere. I couldn't believe the investment. I'm yeah. like, see this this toy needs university needs, you know, <laughs> Like why are we spending all of this money now? Like I felt like shaking the the mom and the dad and like yeah. do you know you guys have an entire journey of mm. but I'm, I'm guessing if you have the money to spend then you yeah. do. Uh, uh, and I think for also for a lot of people who do this it's it's also an expression of love because a yeah. lot of it is gifts from the significant other. Mm. Uh, it's a celebration of how important the child is to them. Mm-hmm. Um but it's yeah so you know we had an episode where Vera uh, revealed the gender of of of, of her child using mm. a helicopter and I think mm. it's usually blue or or yeah. pink. Yeah. And it's 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 it takes a lot of work and a lot yeah. of deliberation on their part mm. um, and of course it's amazing to watch as mm. well it's extremely entertaining it's mm. it's it's beautiful what was uh, it like shooting that scene uh i think it was extremely difficult for yeah. uh, for the audience because not for the for the crew for the crew because if i remember correctly on the day uh cuz you've got to, to you've got to have so many moving parts mm. uh, coming together mm. you've got the guests who are sitting i think it was at Windsor. yeah um and you know Kenyans and all is running late so i'm mm. sure there was someone who was late <laughs> <laughs> uh so then you've got the helicopter on standby yeah uh, and it has to pass at just a certain time yeah. and and uh, you know dispense this uh, mm. powder that then signifies what what the child's gender is yeah. it's really really calculated mm. um and you know for the crew then you have to capture it because can you imagine if for whatever reason your car does run out you, you at that, that very moment oh and helicopters have a cut time as to when they can fly clean, I would kill you. <laughs> like if you miss that shot <laughs> Yeah. And helicopters have a cut out time and up to yeah. when they can fly and I imagine you know if you miss it and you have to fly again I imagine it's another hour. So it's it's extremely delicate to put together but yeah. uh, a lot of those cast members are very very deliberate about things. And yeah. this was even before the show, you know. This is how mm. they live their lives. Wow. Yeah. Wow. I mean, so interesting. Such a such an interesting social experiment about Kenya, but I guess because it's a genre that's worked and it's a format that's worked, mm. then then you you understand the success. I want to talk a little bit about the business though before because I know Tracy has a bunch of questions that she wants to ask about the show and I think more broadly about you know about you and 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 and, and the kind of work that you guys have been doing at DNR. I want to ask about the business in this way. How do you then um, you, you you mentioned there was being Bahati. Then there was Soul Family. Then there was Wahoo and, and Nameless this love, Show, yes. This Love. Mm-hmm. Um, and then there was uh, Kialo Culture, right? That, what did every experience, you know, in every one of these shows teach you? Now, like from a the business point of view, in terms of how to be able to plan, how to be able to cost, how to be able to, you know, what moment do you then use um, to be able to launch these shows, yeah? Yeah. I think it's 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 been a strong strong learning curve and and mm. by the way we have um, as a company we have uh, a bunch of other shows outside this yeah. the reality ones yeah. but I think those are the ones that you know those uh, are kind of your flagships yes. yeah because if you remember we started with a profile show called mm. Young Rich where we mm. used to profile young Kenyan uh, millionaires mm. and then we have a bunch of cooking shows we have Get in the Kitchen we have Foods of Kenya yeah perfect uh, wedding our perfect wedding mm-hmm. Dance Story Yangu Uh, we've got a show called Best of uh, mm-hmm. on NTV that profiles the best of Kenya, mm-hmm. and I think all through the all through these years, it's one of the first uh, things that became very important for us, especially for those uh, reality shows, mm-hmm. is that it was partnerships with the uh, with with the artists or the personalities, mm-hmm. and so we had Bing Bahati and we uh, and and the rest of the, outside of NBC Universal, most of the other shows we co-own with the with the, with the cast members. Mm-hmm. Um, 
And on the business end, you know, there's several ways that you achieve a show on television. There's, there's licensing, which we were just talking about mm -hmm. earlier, where you, you create the concept and a channel pays you and produce it and then a channel pays you to have the, mm -hmm. the content on for a certain period of time. Uh, then you have commissioning where, uh, yeah. you know, it's, it's their concept and or the, rather they, they acquire the concept entirely and pay mm -hmm. you a fee for, for the production. And the, the beauty of, of, of that industry, at least as far as we are concerned, is that we've seen growth. You know, mm -hmm. I think being Bahati was maybe 2016 or 17 mm -hmm. and we've been able to get bigger budgets. Um, as the teams, uh, I think we were the first like proper structured team to work on reality as the teams mm -hmm did it more and more, they, it became easier for them to do. Yeah. Uh, learnings that we're getting from things like NBC Universal and like the trainings from Showmax mm -hmm. are also helping us with uh, storytelling is easier. Mm. So for instance, I think it's taken us, uh, it, it easily have taken us, we have a, a, a new season of, of Kalo Culture currently streaming on Showmax. Mm. And I think it's taken us half the time to shoot this season mm. than it did season one. Just because you become yeah, a bit better adapt. at things, yeah. yeah. And also when budgets are better, people cooperate more. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Um, so it's the, the business wise, it's, it's it's been quite something. Um, mm -hmm. Of course, there's also reality TV is also uh, a bit of touchy ground because yeah. we are a very moral country, as as, mm -hmm. as you know. Mm -hmm. So it's also like just being careful to know what what mm -hmm. to avoid, what is pushing it too far. Yeah. Um, so on the business end, it's 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 it's, it's been quite interesting. Also, mm -hmm. one of the things we we are now trying to crack is how do you then make those shows sustainable by themselves? Yeah. Um, and I was just telling you earlier how, like with a show like Kalo Culture, we've now invested as a company in a, in a, in a makeup line mm -hmm. uh, with Betty Chalo that mm -hmm. we're hoping to launch sometime this year. And, you know, we've been a year and a half of research and development. And, you know, that's nothing, it wasn't anything we thought we'd ever get into. Yeah. Um, you're having to, so some of the stars that we are, we are making are also becoming pretty big. So now you start, mm -hmm. have to start thinking about, uh, talent management and mm. ensuring that your people are, are, you know, you can make the most out of it. Uh, so it's 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 a it's a business wise it's it's a it's it's a very strong link, up, very yeah. interesting, um, and also just observe what works for the audience, what doesn't. And I think the whole adage just goes, it's you know, mm. bigger better. Like people yeah. just like bigger things. Yeah. So and that's what real houses is. All right, big fish though, um, in a small pond. Would you say that that describes you? Um, not just in terms of the size and the scope of the content that you do, but in the size of the pond in Kenya. Mm -hmm. Because, you know, I'm, I'm also in this industry and, and sometimes it feels like uh, you can touch both walls, you know, in, in, in a sense. What's your view on, on where next for the kind of content that you do? And is Kenya fully maximized? Like, have we saturated the amount of interest, the amount of money there is in mm -hmm. terms of content? Um, for you as DNR, but more broadly as content producers in Kenya? I think the biggest challenge excuse me, mm. uh, that we are facing globally is that the media industry is changing dramatically. Mm. Um, and in Kenya for, for many years, you had your free-to-air channels, which were the biggest players, you yeah. know, led by Citizen and MTV mm -hmm. and KTN and then everybody else after that. Um, and for many, many years, they were driven heavily by advertising. Mm. I think you and I both know that uh, our industry is the only one where mm. what you are getting when you joined mm. has halved mm -hmm. in 10 years in as 10 opposed years. to growing. That's true. Um, uh, which, which is, uh, you know, part of it is, is not really their fault. It's just the changing tides. Mm. And, you know, the last, I think, COVID also just made things a bit more brutal. Mm. So you have a situation where audiences from the free-to-air channels are dying on a daily basis. Mm -hmm. And they're not going to one place. Mm -hmm. They're going on people's Instagram pages. They're yeah. going to YouTube couples. Uh, they're going on TikTok. Mm -hmm. um, and so it's a, it's an extra, I keep saying it's an extremely scary time to be, uh, to be in our industry. Mm -hmm. Because um, you and I, we, who are more traditional broadcast players, mm -hmm are competing with an 18 year old mm. with a tripod and his phone mm. and he's making us compelling content. Oh yeah. Uh, and and he's making us sweat. Yes. Yeah. It's amazing stuff he's making. You're watching mm. it as well. Mm. Uh, he's got no, um, uh, you know, running costs. Mm. Um, they've got, you know, we, we also, we are slaves of the gatekeeper, so to speak. Mm. We've always had someone who approves an editor yeah. and then he goes on a channel and, and this guy, go, you know, self-publishing is, 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 is here today, mm. um, and th also the change with 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 with, um, with mediums, which is what like a TikTok car is, yeah. it always favors the newcomer who doesn't mm. know about your old ways. Mm. So it's becoming extremely mm. difficult for us to change. So it's in terms of that sense, we do sense the pond getting smaller and smaller. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But my analysis of it is, and again, you know, I could be wrong. None of us can predict the future, especially because of how quick our, mm -hmm. our industry changes. I think the industry will be separated into two. Mm -hmm. So there'll be. 
players would do because there'll always be room for big productions and here you're yeah. talking like look at a movie like Mission Impossible mm. those will always bring you to the table like, yeah. if you want to see how much they spend doing that yeah. stunt um, and then there'll be big productions like Real Houses and those will mm. have um, a world of their own mm. then now everything else will be on digital mm. uh, so that it needs to be more agile it needs to be um, uh, choppier mm-hmm. uh, you know attention spans are going lower like I struggle to make a TV show fit in 24 minutes. It's one of the biggest fights I mm. have with everybody. Like, so Real House is 42 minutes. Yeah. And we are constantly submitting episodes that are 52 minutes. Mm. Mm. TikTok requires you to have it in 15 seconds. Yeah. We don't, I don't know how to do that. <laughs> <laughs> so it's, yeah. it's, so those, those changes and, uh, so we are finding this, the pond becoming smaller because advertising revenue has mm. gone in so many other places. Mm. But then now enter streaming, which is yeah. video on demand and what are people willing to pay to watch. Mm. Uh, and, and, you know, I think if you look at the premiere of Real Houses, for instance, it tells you that people are willing to pay to watch that. Mm. Uh, people are willing to pay for subscriptions. I mean, look at Abel Mutua and what those guys are doing in yeah. the films. They form their own on-demand platform and mm. they are able to make their revenue back because of marketing and people are willing to pay for that specifically. Yeah. So it's the pond is becoming smaller, but what 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 we are hoping on our side and what our strategy is is to first expand mm. uh, into other countries. We are trying to to grow our our, our footprint. Mm. Um, we are also now also trying to go digital as well as I was mentioned to you earlier. We have a platform yeah. called Control Z, mm-hmm. which is uh, more shorter, agile content that goes straight to digital. Mm. Um, and my hope is that I will be dead by the time this. <laughs> <laughs> this transition happened entirely. It would be my headache <laughs> because I honestly, I was, I was quite, yeah, I'm yeah. as excited as I am afraid of yeah, the future. It is an exciting and a, and a, and a scary time, but yeah. you know, the, there's that expression: "May you live in interesting times." Yes, right. So I think I think this is that time, yeah. and and for better or for worse, mm. it, it really is an interesting time. Yeah. Tracy, um, you have um, followed the work of DNR. And, and so I want you to come in here for two reasons, right? So one, I'm sure there's very interesting things that you have to ask. But number two, what are the fact checks? Why are you looking at me suspiciously? Because huh? you've chosen a different format today. I'm panicking. <laughs> <laughs> you haven't heard things are dynamic. You're uh-huh. supposed to roll with the punches. Hey. Anyway, yeah, I mean, what, what things are you interested to learn from, from, from Eugene? But secondly, of course, because of our fact-checking agenda, there's stuff that I'm sure you've got on here that kind of works with what we're talking about today. So, shoot. Okay. Should I look at you now? You can, yeah, you can turn. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm. Aha. Yes. So now, when I was looking for fact-checks for this episode, there aren't many lies mm-hmm. with regard to film and things mm. like that, mm. but I came across something wild. Mm. So I came across this blog and the first name was about you. Mm. Uh-huh. So, was it one that he had told us earlier? Which one? no, this is another one. Uh, mm. The first thing that was wild well, that is the T where where <laughs> <laughs> uh, So, Eugene Bogwa, age thirty-seven as of May twenty twenty-three. Mm-hmm. Oh, is that true? Which blog is that? Very weird one. <laughs> no, no, no. I'm, I'm thirty. I'm thirty-two now. I'm turning thirty-three later this year. Uh-huh. Yeah. Uh-huh. And then they claimed your net worth is sixty-five million shillings. Uh, yeah, Kenya shillings. Uh, that's an exaggeration. I'm, I'm very poor. Uh-huh. <laughs> <laughs> uh-huh. Anyway, those were the major lies yeah. I found about him because mm. I started questioning the content yeah. when they said he's thirty-seven. Uh-huh. So I was like, no. I think there's, uh, again, this, what, what you're calling self-publishing, which yeah. doesn't have any caps. There's yeah. a lot of pages now that, uh, you know, they just need to put content out. So they never mm-hmm. interview you. They'll just write stuff. Mm-hmm. There's one we had to, it was actually done by one of the big publications here. Oh, and really? they, they did an interview. It had, they had, did an article. It had quotes. It had, From you that you hadn't. Yeah, that I hadn't yeah. given. Wow. Uh, and we had to call and ask, like, what the hell? Yeah. Uh, it's, uh, so it's, uh, this is one of those, I guess. <laughs> mm. Okay, but uh, you know, I, I could take thirty-seven uh. if it comes with the money. <laughs> if they give me the, the, the sixty-five million, million. <laughs> uh, isn't that always the, 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 the nonsense about these kinds of things? They tell you that you're worth so much. So there's a guy who's walking around thinking, "We are John Allen, we are Eugene." Yeah. <laughs> Like 65 million. Do you know what I would do? And they, they think it's in cash. Yeah, yes. yeah, exactly. <laughs> like, yeah, 65 years. Yeah, like Sonko. Yeah, and Sonko. Yeah, yeah. Like so- you know. So I'm supposed to have more money than Sonko in, the, yeah. in that book. Uh, yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. So, uh-huh. now, my question. Um, 
See, when people look at John Allen, if it's a John Allen Namu production, if you've been corrupt or if you've committed murder recently, the intro, they come at drums of war. Because, mm. <laughs> you know, yeah. uh, when you hear John Allen Namu, you're like, who's he going to expose today? Yeah. Uh, you know? Yeah. <laughs> but with you, Kialo culture, this mm. love, soul family, now real, real housewives, mm. these are all different things. Like, we never know what you're going to do next. Mm -hmm. So what's the thought process like for your content creation, if I may call it that? I, I think in, initially how we, we picked genres was I got into, I, I love documentaries. Uh, and, and to this day, I think it's what I consume most, uh, be way beyond. Real. I barely watch any reality, except maybe some of our stuff and for educational purposes. Not, not because I have anything against it, but because I, I'm a... I'm the documentary guy. I'm on Al Jazeera. I'm on, mm. you know, those boring ones that some mm. of the, the, uh, the conspiracy theories, like I'm mm. deep into that stuff. <laughs> so documentaries is a genre of, of deep interest to me. And so that's, you know, hence I drifted towards that. But also business-wise, it's, it's a, it's a, it has a cheaper uh, barrier to entry. Uh, because if you look at scripted television, you need actors, you need uh, props, you need studios. And basically, documentaries are human stories. Uh, you just need a bunch of cameras and, and interesting people to tell their stories. So that, that's what dictated the entry. Uh, then I think reality just came uh, as, as we went along. There was no, there was no real um, push on our end. I mean, I think I met Bahati, I listened to his life story, and the more he talked about it, I was like, this could make really good TV. Mm. Uh, and as that went, went ahead, you know, you do something long enough, you, be, you get, you, your team becomes better at it. And so you, you pick that. However, I am very, very keen, and we're doing that as a company now, to get into scripted television. Uh, John and I have also spoken about some collaboration, but mm. uh, I think on our side, we, 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 we live more on escapism. You know, we want... Uh, there, there's, there's all kinds of, of content for, for all occasions. You know, you've got the work that you guys do, which mm. is keep society honest um, and, and sort of like uh, expose the corrupt and those who are, who are, who are evil. Uh, then when you're done with that, you need something mindless to just get your mind off mm. things and just entertain you for a bit. And I think that's where we live. Uh, but we're also very big on, I think, but if you look at all our shows, there's one constant thing is we're telling human stories. Mm. We are sharing with you inspiration, we're sharing with you um, happiness and, and sadness in, all in one. It's human stories. You know what I'm saying? Uh, Good question. Interesting. Mm. Mm. Now that you've talked about your partnership. Yes. John Allen uh -huh. on scripted television. So I want you to tell me if this is a fact or it's just fictitious. People say that, okay, I've seen a couple of these claims online that our reality TV producers aren't really good with scripted content. Like, you know, the battle between mm. theatre actors and yes. mm. television mm. actors. So is that true? I think it might be. Uh, just generally, if you've, if you've done something long enough, you're usually good at that thing. Mm. Uh, crossing over is often quite difficult. But the thing to understand even about our production company is how little my hand is in the, even in the work we do now. Uh, I'm an entrepreneur, so what what I do, uh, and you know, I answer to a board now at the DNR Studios, uh, is we put together structures that are needed to help teams that are good at what they do to do what they do. So you see, like at at at, at, at Trill Houses, I think I went on set maybe five times. Um, I'm not I'm not the actual guy putting together the story. We've got amazing teams there: uh, writers, directors, producers, uh, camera guys, sound people, um, and. Uh, and Kenya has really, you know, just because there's been so much productions in the last many years, uh, the expertise is growing in leaps. Um, so I might say that I am not going to be the good scripted producer, but I guarantee you I will not be the one producing it. So I will not put my taka taka hands on it. <laughs> There'll be a solid team <laughs> that's good at, at, at doing that stuff that hopefully will. So I'm, I'm working towards more putting the teams together, not so much uh, doing the production ourselves. And the, the thing is we... we we're taking the same approach to scripted TV as, 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 um, as we do for our realities. What are human stories? What's interesting now? If Can you put together good enough actors? And I imagine we won't get it right on the first go, um, but it's something we, we really want to delve into. We've been looking for opportunities here and there, mm. uh, but it seems like we always get consumed by... I don't know if you get this. Mm. When you have interests, mm -hmm. But then your reality now keeps consuming you because yeah. you want to explore that. But what you do now keeps pulling you. Yeah, yeah. No, no, no. Do this this year. Do this this year. Yeah, exactly. This contract is here now. Let's run. Yeah. So we are prisoners to that. And I've been wanting to do it for like five years now. 
But I think this year we might finally commit. Mm. Great. Mm. Okay, Crazy. one last question. Yes. Yeah. yeah, that that you mentioned, you're an entrepreneur. <laughs> so I've seen your businesses, number seven and now Balok. Mm. So, um, the question now. <laughs> so yeah, to young people, you know, like I know I'm a fact checker. So I will focus, I will focus my attention on fact checking and journalism. Mm. But how do you consider which businesses to venture into, mm. even as you stick to your main like hustle? The first thing to understand is my main business is television. Yeah. Uh, so I wake up, I'm at my desk every morning at 6 a.m. doing television. Mm -hmm. um, then the other stuff is like, so that you mentioned number seven, which is a club. Uh, I have partners there who do the day to day. Um, I've, I've been, how I have found my way in the world is I've always taken the chance that I've gotten and just given it my all. So there's a lot of people who try and, you know, you have your hands in a bunch of things, but the one must be king. Uh, and in our case, that's, that's, that's television. Um, so the, for the other businesses, as I mentioned, yeah, but if you notice, ac except the farming, which we are not very good at, by the way, uh, everything else is entertainment. <laughs> <laughs> and we've got, we've got, we've got, I've got great partners uh, all around, uh, you know, Moniki Magari, as you mentioned, mm. we've got, now we've got Dr. Sam Daniel who's joined our company and we have our board members, Carol Dongo, uh, Anne Gitao and Stephen Gugu. It's just, yeah, it's, it's, uh, the TV remains the, the main, the main one. Mm. 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 That's it from oh. my corner. <laughs> oh, very good. Well done. Very good question. Very interesting. It's good to hear that there's not that much misinformation. <laughs> <laughs> and if you speak to those guys, they'll put it at 200 million next yeah. time. Yeah. <laughs> <That's>... <laughs> Eugene, yeah. uh, we're going to wind it up here, man. Thanks a lot. There's, there's so much. I mean, like with, with Tracy mentioning the other businesses, there's also other sides to you. And I think also um, that side to, you know, Kenyan entrepreneurship, mm. that would be very good to explore. But perhaps another day, another yeah. time, right? I know you've got, you know, a very busy day. So on to a tradition that mm -hmm. we have here on the big picture, right? So every guest that comes in, we want to say Asante. Yeah. We have a very special way of saying Asante. Uh -huh. Mr. Luis Alosa over here has been looking at you and uh, this is what he thought. <laughs> <laughs> I love I love the reactions every time, right? Yeah, Mr. Eugene, in a car, uh, yeah, 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 I can uh, see it. I can yeah, see yeah. it. Yeah, You know, yeah. I, used to, I, I follow him. I follow. Did you ever ex uh, exhibit your work at the junction? Um, I don't exhibit, but I do like caricatures. Yeah. Oh, I see. I see because I I, have, I follow him. I follow him on Instagram. Yeah. Oh, do you? Yes, yeah, so this is uh, amazing. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> we actually met at, at a mall, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. Yes. Uh, mm. Yeah, yeah. Yes, good. So this will be sent to you once the season's over <laughs> yeah. for you to put somewhere at yeah. DNR. Yeah, yeah. yeah Just as a thank you yeah. uh, for coming onto the big picture. Uh, Asante Sanaban. Yeah, and yeah. Thank thanks you. for your insights, Asante right? Asante and best of luck on uh, the second season of The Real Housewives. Yes, assuming, we'll, it assuming it comes. Assuming it comes, <laughs> right? So I hope that we'll be here to discuss what happens then and many of the other shows that mm. you're doing, right, man? So cheers. Thank thanks a lot, Asante man. Asante. I really appreciate it. Guys, big picture episode, whatever is done here. Um, and we've got we've got a really interesting conversation and lots to reflect on. And, and Tracy, by the way, thanks for those questions. They were very interesting to think about from the point of view of a young person who's observing this. Um, I just want to say thanks again to my guest, um, Eugene Bogua. Thanks to the team who's been uh, helping us produce this. And thank you for watching. Um, keep watching, keep subscribing, go on to our Patreon, throw some money there so that we can also do this work as we try and also get to the level that uh, Mr. Eugene is at over here, right? My name is John Allen. Thanks a lot for watching The Big Picture. We'll see you on the next one. Cheers.